Hello and welcome to Baicho's Exam Prep IAS. Let's get started and look into our daily quiz. Before we start with our practice questions for the day, a quick gentle reminder. Baicho's Exam Prep IAS has already launched its official Telegram channel. What is that you have to do? Follow the link given in the description box or scan this QR code. This will take you to our official Telegram channel. Join the channel so that you get all the current affairs related updates. Let's get started and look into the first question. Consider the following statement. Gambling is a concurrent subject allowing both the union and state government to regulate. Tinpati is a game of chance. Which of the statements given above is are correct? The answer to this is two only. Why have we taken this practice question? Because this article on the Hindu makes a reference to gambling. Let us try and understand what are these statements. When you look into the first statement, gambling is a concurrent subject allowing both the union and state governments to regulate. This is a wrong statement. Why? Because gambling is a state subject. It is not a concurrent subject. We have entry number 34 which speaks about betting and gambling and this is in the state list. So remember, betting and gambling is in the state list and it is the state governments which would be able to come up with its own laws and ultimately regulate betting and gambling which is why each state government has its own set of laws with respect to gambling. Some states may allow betting and gambling in their own states and multiple other states may not allow it. Since betting and gambling is a state subject, the states would be able to regulate them. So the first statement is wrong. When you look into the second statement, Tinpati is a game of chance. This happens to be a right statement. What is this game of chance? There are two types of games. One is what is called as game of skill. The other is what is called as the game of chance. What is this game of skill? Let's take the example of chess. Is chess something to do with the game of chance? No, it is a game of skill. Why? Because there is intellectual capacity that is used. There is skill set that is used. You would be able to understand how this entire game works. It requires a lot of practice over a period of time. As a result, chess happens to be a game of skill. Similarly, if there are any other games which involves use of the thought process that is what is called as game of skill then there is something called as the game of chance this depends purely on the luck let's say for example we have the game like Andar Bahar where if you're playing the game of cards whether that particular card number will fall for you or not is based on luck so if it is based on luck in all those cases the state should be able to regulate them and if it is based on the skills the state should allow them to progress as well so Tinpati happens to be a game of chance. Now let's look into the next practice question. With respect to Basavanna, which of the following statements is are correct? Basavanna was a 12th century philosopher and a social reformer during the reign of Kalachuri dynasty king Bijjalawan. Ankita Nama or the signature name of Basavanna is Chennamalli Karjuna. He launched Anubhava Mantapa, a public assembly and gathering that attracted men and women across various walks of life from different lands to openly discuss spiritual, economic and social issues of life. Which of the statements are correct? The answer to this is 1 and 3 only. Why have we taken this practice question? Because this article on the Hindu makes a reference to Basaveshwara. So what are we speaking about? We are speaking about Basavanna. Basavanna happens to be a philosopher. He happens to be a statesman, Kannada poet, social reformer during the reign of Kallachuri dynasty king Bijjala in Karnataka. So when you look into the first statement, yes, the first statement is right. When you look into the second statement, Ankita Nama or the signature of Basavanna happens to be Chenna Mallikarjuna. This happens to be a wrong statement. That is because when we speak about Basavanna, it is not Chenna Mallikarjuna, it is Kudala Sangama Deva. Chenna Mallikarjuna happens to be a signature name of Akka Maha Devi. So second statement is wrong. When you look into the third statement, yes, he did launch what is called as the Anubhava Mantapa. What is this Anubhava Mantapa? Anubhava Mantapa happens to be a Kannada word. Anubhava is basically 
practically your experiences mantapa happens to be a hall so it is this hall which was run as an institution where people who have experienced multiple issues like social issues economic issues philosophical issues spiritual issues all come together and they discuss on this anubhava mantapa so anubhava mantapa basically means experience hall so you might have experienced all the negative things in your life you come up to this particular hall to this institution you clarify all the dilemmas that you have so this institution was created by baswanna if we have to look into some of the important factual data he was born in karnataka he is also known as bhakti bandari that is nothing but treasurer of devotion baswanna used his poetry known as vachanas to raise societal consciousness gender or social discrimination superstitions and rituals were all rejected by baswanna baswanna is credited with several major lingayat works including vachanas such as shat stala vachana kala gnana vachana mantra gopya gatna chakra vachana raja yoga vachana so on and so forth he established a new public organization known as anubhav mantapa that we just discussed he fought against the inhuman practice of caste system which discriminate against people on the basis of birth he presided over the sharana movement which drew individuals from all classes and like most tranches of the bhakti movement generated a corpus of literature the vachanas that revealed the spiritual realm of the veera shaiva saint basaveshwara is the first kannadiga to have a commemorative coin made in his honor in celebration of his social reforms as we discussed basavanna is said to have developed a deep devotion towards lord shiva which is why his signature name happens to be kudala sangama now let's look into the next practice question which of the following are considered as minor forest produce we have arjuna bark bamboo sandalwood tendu leaves and tusha the answer to this is 1 2 4 and 5 only why have we taken this practice question because this article on the hindu makes a reference to the minor forest produce which is why we have taken this practice question what is this minor forest produce section 2i in the schedule tribes and other traditional forest dwellers that is recognition of the forest rights act 2006 clearly says that this includes all non timber forest produce of plant origin including bamboo brushwood stumps cane tusar cocoons honey wax lac tendu or kendu leaves medicinal plants and herbs roots tubers and the like so these are some of the examples of the minor forest produce and sandalwood is not a minor forest produce it happens to be a major forest produce in this particular backdrop if there is any sandalwood smuggling that happens the government would be able to regulate it they would be able to impose penalty on those smugglers as well so minor forest produce are those produce or those products which these people would be able to collect it and sell it but that is not the same when it comes to sandalwood so on and so forth so when we speak about minor forest produce remember this happens to be an important source of income for all these tribal dwellers and they ensure that they collect these minor forest produce and ultimately sell it in the open market an estimated 100 million people derive their source of livelihood directly from the collection and marketing of these minor forest produce and this also acts as a major source of nutrition for these people as well now let's look into the next practice question arrange the following islands from north to south we have fiji new caledonia solomon island the answer to this is 312 why have we taken this practice question because this article on the hindu makes a reference to the solomon islands if we have to arrange them from north to the south what we have is solomon islands followed by fiji and then what we have is the new caledonia so arranging from north to south south to the north east to the west and west to the east is probable question in your upsc preliminary examination this region has been in use so remember that you have an idea about north to south south to north so on and so forth so this article currently goes on to say that we have the prime minister of solomon island who has clarified that there is no chinese troops in the solomon island now let's look into the next practice question 
with reference to Indian history, consider the following statement. The first Mongol invasion of India happened during the reign of Jalaluddin Khalji. During the reign of Alaluddin Khalji, one Mongol assault marched up to Delhi and besieged the city. Muhammad bin Tughlaq temporarily lost portions of northwest of his kingdom to Mongols. Which of the statements given above is are correct? The answer to this is two only. This happens to be a previous year question from the year 2022. So when we speak about the first statement, the first statement reads, Mongol invasion of India happened during the reign of Jalaluddin Khalji. This happens to be a wrong statement. That is because it happened during the period of Sultan Shamsuddin Iltumish. So the first statement is wrong. When you look into the second statement, yes, this statement is right. During the reign of Alaluddin Khilji, one Mongol assault marched up to Delhi and besieged the city. This statement is right. When you look into the third statement, the third statement is wrong. Muhammad bin Tughlaq temporarily lost portions of northwest of his kingdom to Mongols. This is a wrong statement. Now let's look into the fact of the day. The fact of the day for today's discussion is diethylon glycol in cough syrups. Let us try and understand what is this topic all about. Recently, about 66 children passed away in the Western African nation of Gambia. So remember, Gambia happens to be a Western African nation. Prima facie, when this particular issue was investigated, it was found out that four cough syrups were consumed by these children. This led to the death of these children. Which are the four cough syrups? This included promethazine oral solution, Coffex malin baby cough syrup, make of baby syrup and may grip and cold syrup. These syrups were manufactured in India by an Haryana based maiden pharmaceuticals. So we have the World Health Organization which has put out a word of caution against all these baby syrups. The Indian government has also started a probe into the manufacturing of the cough syrup. What has the World Health Organization said? The World Health Organization has said that these four medicines are the cough and the cold syrups produced by the maiden pharmaceutical limited in India. So the World Health Organization has linked these four cough syrups to acute kidney injuries. In fact, these samples were also tested as well and the samples included some of the chemicals like the diethylene glycol. So what is this chemical? The four cough syrups were found to have unacceptable amounts of di ethylene glycol, ethylene glycol as contaminant. World Health Organization has said the diethylene glycol or ethylene glycol is toxic to the humans when consumed and can prove to be fatal. The contents are known to cause kidney and neurological toxicity and have been associated with several cases of mass poisoning when consumed via drugs. The chemical is also used to make brake fluid cosmetics and lubricants and consumption can also cause renal failure leading to the death and coma. The toxic effect of the chemicals which taste sweet and is water soluble include abdominal pain, vomiting, diarrhea, inability to pass urine, headache, altered mental state as well as acute kidney injury. What are the latter repercussions? When we look at India, India is known as the pharmacy of the world. Cheap drugs, syrups, vaccines are manufactured in India and they are exported to multiple countries across the world. As a result, many countries start importing these products from India and ultimately what India has been able to establish is a very good relationship when it comes to the pharmaceutical exports. When it comes to these products, these products though manufactured in India are not sold in India. They are only meant for exports as well. So it is in this particular backdrop other countries may stop trusting India at this particular moment. Prima facie, it looks like this particular product was exported from India to other countries and since it is not used in India, it is not sold in India, it may have a negative impact. As of now, it looks like it. But in the near future, if investigations are concluded and if it is found that it is not because of this particular company, the re-establishment may occur as well. So India being a pharmaceutical hub may have an impact when it comes to the exports of the pharmaceutical products in the near future. These are the larger repercussions because of this particular issue. This is it for today. Thank you for watching. All the best.